Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Robin Gunn, and I grew up on 142nd Street. And we, everybody on 142nd Street know that we are family. We support one another. We love one another. And um, <laughs> Miss Moore would be outside every day. You know, the cats would be around, and, you know, she'd be always sitting, you know, on the stairs or just always standing up looking. And we knew as kids, we better watch what we say because Ms. Moore, well, she get us. She gonna say something to us. <laughs> and for so many years, and I, you know, I lived pretty much diagonally across from their house, and I didn't know she was married for years. You know, because I would talk to Ms. Moore. Now I would see her husband, and I didn't know that was him. He would be under the car, always working. Doing something, so I thought it was just a random guy working on the car. <laughs> and you know, every day, you know, we get some change, go to the store. Me and my childhood friends on 142nd, and and I remember telling my childhood friend, I said, I think he like her. <laughs> it was the look he would have, you know. And it wasn't later until I found, you know, I found out they wasn't married. I'm like, oh my God, Miss Moore was married. All the times I'm going over her house and everything, she babies everyone, grandkids be over there. I, you know. <laughs> But to know her is to love her. And I remember, and you know, back then everybody grew up going to church. So we all went to church. But um, it wasn't until I was in my early 20s where I really got filled with the Holy Ghost. And I couldn't, you know, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you be on fire. You can't wait to tell everybody about Jesus. And I, I mean, I was a firecracker running to tell everybody about Jesus. And one day me and Ms. Moore got to talking. And we was talking about life and imperfections. So I thought, I mean, I forgot who she was that time. And I thought I was going to tell her about how perfect God is. And I say, everything God do is perfect. And she said, yes, but nature is not perfect. 
and she started to break down the Lord and nature on a whole different way. I, I mean, I sat down like, okay, okay, I made some humble pie. And you know, that teacher came out that day. But what I've learned is from that moment is how to break things down. That gave me an understanding even about scripture, how to break it down. So I was influenced. So now that I teach at church, I remember Ms. Moore, I break it down. I do that because it gives you the best understanding. Now, mind you, I'll be 45 next month. I was 20 when that happened. And for it to still resonate all these years, it shows the type of impact that people of God have on you. It's amazing. I'm going to miss Ms. Moore. And I tell you, I, I don't think 142nd would be the same without the people that we've had in our lives growing up. Because back then, they can all whoop you. Our parents didn't mind. They could whoop our butts. That's why we were scared all the time. <laughs> we didn't talk back. We were scared because everybody had the opportunity to whoop us. And it didn't matter. But, but I'm going to miss Miss Moore. I love her. And God bless you all. Let's prepare ourselves as Ms. Hardaway comes to read us our obituary at this time. Good morning, family and friends. Louise Suzette Moore was born on July 19th, 1933 to the union of Geneva Harris and Doc Harris. She confessed her love for Christ at an early age. Louise attended the Cleveland Public School System and graduated from John Hay High School. She let it be known that that was her school whenever we drove past the school location. Louise attended Tri-C College and Cleveland State University where she received her bachelor's degree in teaching. She was an educator and taught school for 25 years in the Cleveland Public School System until she retired. Louise met and married Roy Delman Moore. They were the proud parents of two daughters, Rhonda Sherry Walker and Debbie Lisa Moore Smith. Louise and Roy lived on East 142nd Street for over 50 years. She loved the people that lived on that street. She enjoyed reading, shopping, good cooking, dining out at restaurants, casino outings, family gatherings, and staying current on the TV, MSNBC News, specifically the politics. She was also an avid animal lover. On Sunday, March 17, 2024, Louise was called home to be with the Lord. Her husband, Roy, parents, Geneva and Doc Harris, brothers, LaGrady Harris, Joseph Hines, and Doc Harris, sister Elizabeth Griffin, precede her in death. She leaves to cherish her memory, two daughters, Rhonda Walker and Debbie Moore Smith, four grandchildren, Cherise, Rihanna, Ivory, and Latoya Dryden Ross, three, grand, three great-grandchildren, Jaden, Jayla, and Noah, a special sister-in-law, Ruby Moore, brother-in-law, Willie Moore, special nieces, <coughs> Michelle and Sabrina, nephew, Harvey, and a host of other nieces and nephews, cousin Charlene, her longtime <coughs> friend, Geraldine McCleary, and a host of other friends and relatives. To my mother in heaven, I was being selfish and did not want you to leave yet. I wanted you to continue to be here forever. I know you are now in a better place. I love you and miss you so much. In loving memory of a life well lived, your daughter Sherry. Mom, mama, mommy, there is no morning, noon or night that I don't think about you. If I could sit in heaven with you for just one day, the hole in my heart may go away. Paradise has gained an angel. I love you, Mommy, until eternity. Your daughter, Debbie. 
In memory of my sister-in-law, Lulu, Louise, when she married my brother, Roy, she was not my sister-in-law. She became my sister. I will always remember the fun times we had back in the days and all of the holidays we shared. So sister, it's time for me to say goodbye and you will always be in my heart. Love, Ruby. Amen. Raven is coming with a musical selection, and then afterwards we'll come with the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. If anybody asks you where I'm going, where I'm going, so if you want to know where I'm going, where I'm going so I'm going up beyond I'm going up beyond I'm going up beyond to be with my Lord I'm going up beyond I'm going up beyond to be with my Lord. I can take the pain, the heartaches they bring. The comfort and knowing I'll soon be gone As God gives me grace I'll run this race Till I see my Savior Face to face I'm going up beyond I'm going up beyond To be with my Lord I'm going up beyond I'm going up beyond
sisters, family. God, it is my prayer that your word would go forth and that your people would be edified and some would believe saying, I put my trust in you. Father, help me to stand in a way that only you want me to do. In Jesus' name, everyone say amen. amen. First, allow me to thank the family for having me. Uh, I consider it to be a privilege and an honor. Um, I, like Robin, grew up on 142nd, and um, God just orchestrated our paths to stay together because I ended up going to school, high school, with Rihanna and Sharice. Um, and I'll just tell you that I was a perfect child in high school. If they tell you anything differently, they are liars. Amen. Amen. I was, I was the good child of us three. Wouldn't you agree? Amen. And so uh, when I got the call, it shook me because seasons like this, you do not expect. And when God allows for moments to come full circle, it kind of shows you that he's always in control. And so I, I spent some time praying on what, what I would share at times like this. And one of the things that came to my mind because we were in school together is that I noticed that while I was in school, I was a nosy child. I, 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 was, I was the type of child that I liked, I liked to know what was going on. Um, I liked to be in the know. As a consequence of me loving to be in the know, I became very controlling. Because I believe that if I could know everything, that I could control everything. And brothers and sisters, now that I'm 32 years old, I've discovered that there are just some things that are outside of our control. And one of the things that I found myself being outside of my control is life and death. You, you just can't control life or death. You, you, you don't have the power to touch your own womb and create the baby that only God can create, just like you can't create the child in the womb after nine months. You, you don't have permission to tell God when he wants to take his child back home. And church, that's a, that's a bitter pill to swallow because when you cannot control life, and especially when you cannot control death, it causes you to have this thing called grief. Do me a favor. I'm not used to preaching by myself. Look at your neighbor and tell them grief. 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 Reverend, what is grief? Grief is love with no place to go. What, what is grief? Grief is when you have to sit and deal with God's decisions that are outside of your control. And so I look through the Bible and I'm trying to figure out, give me a scripture, Lord, that will help me to understand what this situation is like. Because I cannot control life because you are the author and the finisher of our lives. And I cannot control death because you send your death angels to come and bring us back home. So make this make sense. And it, it, it came to me. It began to show me clear as day the death of Moses. You know Moses, don't you? Moses was the one that God told him, go down and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses was the one that his mother put into a boat because she knew she couldn't take care of him and she sent him into Pharaoh's house. Moses was the one that looked at the burning bush and God began to give him the Ten Commandments. You know Moses, don't you? The Bible says that out of all of the powerful things that Moses did, he got to some 100 years old and out of nowhere, the Bible says that Moses died. Well, what is Moses' diagnosis? What does the autopsy say about the death of Moses? He's not sick. He, he didn't do anything wrong. He was a servant of God. The Bible says that God took him to the top of the mountain. Stay with me. I'm almost done. I'm done now. He takes him to the top of the mountain. He tells Moses to look over into the promised land. And while he's showing him the promised land, he says, Moses, look, this is the land that I promised your ancestors, but you're not going to go there. And the Bible says that Moses died and nobody came to his funeral because God buried him. And brothers and sisters, there's a few things here that I want to leave you and I'll take my seat and I know we have to all go. But number one, 
when it comes to death and when it comes to Moses, and I believe when it comes to Miss Moore, God only takes you as far as he wants you to go. And I need you to realize that because life cannot be spent arguing about where you were not able to go and what you were not able to do because whenever God calls your name, that's as far as he wants you to go. And I know that we have our bucket list. I got a list of them myself. I would love to go over to Dubai and go to the south of France and go to Africa. And I want to live in a lavish house and drive a nice car. But hold on. If I don't get to do anything of all of them, that's on my bucket list. As long as I go to the places that God wants me to go, that's good enough for me. And I know that you are all just like Moses. You have a laundry list of some things. And some of us, we've seen people leave this earth so early that it seems like they were not able to do what God wanted them to do. But can I tell you something? We all have a day when God is going to call our name. That's one phone call that you cannot ignore. Now that I've started to pastor, it just seems like my cell phone has become a hotline. Some days, brothers and sisters, I decide not to answer my phone. But there's a call that I won't be able to ignore. There's a call that won't be able to go to the voicemail, but it's going to call me back at home. And I want to charge you, brothers and sisters, to live your life focused on pleasing God and not your laundry list of what you want to do. Moses went as far as God wanted him to go. Then, listen to this, God exposed him to everything he needed to see so that he can change other people. I'll say that one more time. God exposed him to all that he needed to see so that he can change other people. You know, one of the things, Sharice, that I, I've grown weary of in this life is that so many people think that their life is just about them. If I, if I, I have, now that I'm 32, one of the biggest things that just grinds my gears is selfish people. And I know you love that song, Me, Myself, and I. That's all I got in the end. That's what I found out. And I, and I know you, you self-centered, and as long as I get the bag, that's all that matters. But what if I told you that life is more than just you? Well, what if I told you that sometimes God will call you to this earth to be a servant and a blessing to other people? And it's not just, what if your blessings were connected to your neighbor and not connected to you? How would you live if you knew that your life was for your family and not just for yourself? Well, what, what would you do with your money if you knew that your money was not just for you to have a vacation, but for you to bless the family that you have, and maybe God will give you more if you learn how to give more. Because selfish people only serve themselves when God puts you on this earth to be a blessing to somebody else. I've learned this lesson now that I have two children of my own. I remember when I was in college, I would get up, go, you know, spend money however I wanted to, you know, because it was me, myself, and I. I remember the day that I got married. I, I, I remember when the vow said, for better or for worse, I looked, thought to myself, well, what if I ain't got no money? I, I need to keep my money for myself. But this is what the Lord reminded me. The Lord reminded me that when you give to others, I'll always take care of you. And as I began to look through Ms. Moore's obituary, I'm reminded that she's a retired teacher. You cannot be selfish and be a teacher at the same time. God exposes you to all that you need to see so that you can be a blessing and a change agent to other people. Here it is. Well, Pastor, tell me. What, 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 what happens when we all get old? Do we just get sick and pass away? How, how, how is the, how, what's the holy way to go to heaven? I'll tell you, th this, is what, this is what happened to Moses. The Bible says, somebody shout, the Bible says. The Bible says that Moses died 
because God said it. That there is no specific way for you to transition. There is no holy way. There is no unholy way. When God wants you, God is going to take you. Amen. And what God is trying to say to us is that sometimes the things that he does in our life, please don't miss this. Sometimes the things that he does in our lives don't make sense, but it's his decision. Right. And to be very honest with you. I stop asking God how he does things. I just want him to do it. I don't know how God pays my bills, but I'm just glad he does. I don't know how God wakes me up day after day and gives me strength, but I'm just glad that he does. I don't know how he keeps my children when they go to school, but I'm, I'm glad that he does. And now that I put my trust in him in every area of my life, however he sees fit to do what he needs to do with my life, the only thing I say is, Lord, have your way. And I know it ain't church, but I can I get about seven people that can lift your hands and say, Lord, have your way. Yeah. However you want to do it, I'm okay with your mission and I'm okay with your goal because I've learned that I'm not going to complain about God's blessings. I'm not going to complain about God's burdens. And so the Bible says that he takes Moses as far as he wanted to go. He shows him what he wants to show him. He transitions him in the way that he wants to transition. And then this is my last thing. I know y'all tired of me now. <laughs> Moses transitions him in the way that he wants him to be transitioned. That at the end of the scripture where it talks about Moses' death is in Deuteronomy chapter number 34. That last verse number 5 says that Moses died as a servant. He died as a servant. Will, will you do me a favor? Will you shout servant? Servant. He didn't die as a very rich person. He didn't die as a celebrity. He, he didn't die as someone that everybody was always calling for his name. No, Moses was concerned on being a servant. After 90 years old, living on the street for 50 years, I'm only 32 and she was there my entire life. One of the things that I can remember as well as her being across the street in that garden. And I remember riding up and down the street. You know, Rihanna and Sharice used to bully on me, praise the Lord. <laughs> but I used to still go to their house, amen. But I would always see her across the street in the garden. And I began to do research on that garden. That garden was a community garden where anyone could go and get something out of it if they needed it. And you're laughing, but that's a blessing because it takes a servant to take care of a garden to feed somebody else. Amen. And so as I close this message, I challenge you to do what she did. And that's be a servant to make opportunities for other people. Amen. And I believe that this transition of life is a call for us and a challenge for us to not leave here with the social norm of being selfish and self-centered, but prepare yourself that when God calls your name, we can say that you are a servant. Amen. Amen. That yes, on my on my headstone, they'll probably put pastor. And my if you ask my wife, what does she call me? She'll call me husband. And what does my children call me? They call me dad. And some of my mentees call me mentor. But I want to hear God say, servant. Well done. And I want you to have that same prayer that God says to you. Servant. Well done. Will you clap your hands and give God praise? At this time, I'm going to call for our directors to come. And we're going to lay Miss Moore to rest. But I want you to remember that this is not the last place you'll see her. Amen. No, because her address has just changed. Her address has changed from 142nd to 777 Heavens Highway. And I pray that one day when you close your eyes, we'll all see each other face to face. And if you're not saved, I pray that you would close your eyes right now. Every head bow, every eye closed. And I pray... Um, 
as I pray over you, that you will ask God for the forgiveness of your sin, that you would ask for God to come into your heart and that he would be your savior, no matter how old or no matter how young, no matter, no matter what you've done. I don't care about your past because God doesn't care about your past. He cares about your future. Father, I thank you now for the life of Miss Moore. And I pray, God, that you would do for us what you did for her, and that is save us from our sins, that you would make us new and you would make us right, and that you would make heaven our home so that when this life is over, when we shall close our eyes on this side, we can wake up on the other side and hear thy good and faithful servant. Job well done. We give your praise, give your name, all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. 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 Anyone on this side? If you want to do a final few, please stand.
As much as it pleases the Almighty God to take them to Himself, we commit Miss Moore's body back to the ground, ashes to ashes, earth to earth, dust to dust. Looking forward to the general resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the days to come. Please let not your heart be troubled. For you believe in God, I believe also in Him. Amen. Thank you so much. Again, family and friends, we just want to let you know that we're praying for you. At this time, if we could have some ladies to come and assist us with the flowers, that's that way again. We thank you for these services. And we're going to call for prayer. Paul Bears in a moment, too, and then he will lead us out. And God bless you. <laughs> and can we get six gentlemen to serve as Paul Bears? May we all stand, please, to receive the family. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. right behind the pack. Right behind the pack. Go right behind the pack. Go right behind the pack. Go right behind the pack. 